Welcome to Duporimo. I realize maybe some of the things I've said, and, and, and now it's been days, not just this episode, <laughs> I rub people the wrong way. And I, I, I don't mean for it to, but I'm an opinionated person and I like to hang out with you because I can just say it as it is. And, and I'm sure I've said awful offensive things to you before that I shouldn't have said, but... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that was funny. But you know, I I I'm a big believer in somebody's intention. And I I hate the the road to hell is paved with good intentions saying. I hate that. If there is a hell, it's not going to be filled with people that tried to do good. Okay? It's just I mean, I hate that saying. I hate it. Cuz it's what it's saying is what you seek out to do means nothing what you are trying to do means nothing. That's what that saying means. And I've always been a big believer in context and intention. And if somebody didn't mean to offend somebody with something that they said, okay, they should be held responsible for what they said, but people should also look at the context and what did this person mean when he was saying it and not get fired because he fumbled and and, and said something that somebody took to mean something that he didn't mean for it to mean. So I've, I've said a lot of silly things or, or, or even stupid things. But, but I don't want to drive people away. I don't want people to say, I'm never going to listen to the great stories that these guys produce on their other show because he said all women like David Boreanaz or whatever. And I, if I said that, I didn't mean it. A lot of them like Spike, I would hope. And you, you never watched the show long enough to even meet Spike, but he was the bad vampire that also had the hots for Buffy that came along later. And you kind of had to pick a side. Do I like the soulful, perfect David Boreanaz vampire, or do I like the bad boy, nasty chain smoking Spike? Oh, Spike all the friggin' way, by the way. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I have read that book, The Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and, and I was one of those people, the bad people. Did you ever read anything in that book and say, ah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to do that. I'm going to try to stop doing that. Try to stop doing things the way a man does it or try to stop bugging a woman. Men will start to do these things and women find it repulsive. Women run screaming into the night when a man does this, or at least when Rich Outfield does it. I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I think I did a little. Say, (laughs) oh, maybe I should uh, tone some things down. Because I think that was one of the things is he talked about the way that you say certain things. This is the way that you say it. This is what you mean. This is how she hears it. Right. And, that, and I was like, oh, really? Yeah, he talked about listening to a woman the way you're supposed to listen to a woman versus the way you naturally will want to do it. Because as a man, you're expected to fix things. And so when they start telling you your problems, you start trying to give them solutions and they get pissed off because they don't want you to give them solutions. They just want you to listen to the problems and commiserate with them and then let them move on. I'm getting so angry just remembering some that. of those things you you've got to learn what the point is and what it's all about some of those things that can you can take as a lesson this episode brought to you by John Gray's men are, wait, was that his name yeah I think it was I'm sure there were a lot of things I figured I had to change but I did none of those changes I continued to be a boorish ogre of a man But that's just me. I don't like to change. That's why I still don't write, even though I say I'm going to again and again. Liar! Liar! You wrote a story. Remember a few days ago when we were talking about Uglies, that book? Mm Mm-hmm. You wrote a story before either of us had read Uglies about an ugly girl who gets to be pretty. Mm Mm-hmm. Coincidental broken mirror thing that you Uh and I did because that experience that I had where a girl said, it's been so cool to be pretty. And that, and I was like, you're joking, right? It's like, no, no, it's been great. I was like, well, when did that happen? And she had like a date for when it <laughs> happened. And I was like, I should hate you right now, but I'm far too attracted. Uh, I should hate you right now, but I can't help but find you pretty. <laughs> exactly. What's going on? <laughs> pretty people are likable. <laughs> and it was just like fascinating to me. Unbelievably fascinating. Because I honestly, you'll, you'll hear about like ugly ducklings or somebody like, uh, gosh, what was her name? She was once famous. Renee Russo said she never got a single date in high school or college. She was such a late bloomer and so unattractive. And then one day when she was like 20, three a guy asked her out and suddenly I said like do you model and that and she became like all attractive 
one day. And I was just like, no, that can't possibly be. And so I was totally fascinated when I heard these stories of these rags to riches, only it's not <laughs> rags or riches. It's, it's ugly. Ugl- uglies to pretties uh, stories. And, and so I wrote a story about it. I wrote two stories about it and you wrote a story about it. And shoot, I really wanted to talk about that, but we don't have to, I guess we've already exhausted that subject. What was your motivation for writing that story, and how did you feel about the main character? It was the story that you told me. You told me the story about this girl saying that to you. And you said, I, I think I remember when you were done, you are just like, boy, is that a sci-fi idea or what? I thought, indeed it is, Rish Outfield. Let me write a fantasy story about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because fantasy couldn't possibly happen, and yeah. sci-fi could possibly, right? What's the difference? Something like that. I don't know. All right. So I, I, I thought it was one of those kind of ideas and I went ahead and did it. And the idea I thought that was the kernel of the story was the girl who all these people think she's amazingly good looking all of a sudden. And she looks in the mirror and sees herself the same as she's always seen herself. She doesn't see any difference. And she's sitting there looking at herself in the mirror going, what is going on? I am the same person. Why is the, how, why have things changed? I, I just like that idea. Oh, I do too. Yeah. That gets my goat. Will be continued next time. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons okay. three point license. True, boy, for you.